Thank you very much. That was a very warm welcome. I was beginning to get concerned because nobody wants to sit next to me. So I will be brief. Uh, that was very humbling, and I appreciate that. And I extend my heartfelt welcome to everyone here. I am really quite moved that we have so many friends and supporters here uh, tonight. But I also find myself in the unenviable position of standing between you and food, so I will make myself my, my remarks very brief heard about the genesis of this program from the core philosophy to the launch here tonight, uh, the road that we traveled from pencil to practice, but how did I become a part of this wonderful and exciting adventure? Uh, Dean Lane told you the end of the story, but I'm going to just bring you back to the beginning. It's been a bit of a circular path for me, two decades in the making. So if we go back to spring of my senior year at SUNY Albany, I was working on my senior thesis which is an allegorical analysis of Shakespeare's The Tempest. I called my mother to let her know that I had finally, at long last, decided upon my career. Given my fondness for language, debate, literary interpretation, government, social policy, it seemed predestined that I could be nothing other than a professor of Greco-Roman history who spent her summers on archaeological digs. <laughs> so the abbreviated response that I got, essentially, was no. <laughs> so I applied to law school. I was accepted at Hofstra. I graduated three years later, and I was admitted to practice in New York and New Jersey. Since then, as many of you know, my career path has led me from small firm to solo practitioner to principal law clerk at Nassau Supreme Court with the most accomplished, most beloved, and most honorable Joel Asarch. And although I can assure you that one year ago I never imagined that I would or even that I could be standing in front of you today, I believe it's a, national, a, a natural progression and a perfect marriage between public service and academia. This program envisions service to those who by circumstance may be unable to have an equal voice in or even equal access to our legal system, but it will also incubate the fellows to be better prepared to practice law confidently and effectively and to encourage them to devote their future careers to serving all strata of society who are in need of legal assistance. We recognize that access to justice is a keystone in the stability of any community. And for us attorneys, it does not always have to be a choice between public interest law and the law firm ladder. They are not and they should not be mutually exclusive goals. An advance warning, uh, I will call upon my friends and my colleagues to assist in this process. And I already see a number of volunteers in the audience of my <laughs> multidisciplinary team. I just haven't informed you of that yet, but I will get you before the end of the evening. My thanks to Judge Lippman, President Rabinowitz, Dean Lane, Dean Gunlack, the Incubator's Board of Directors, and our inaugural donors who have enabled a concept to become an actuality. I am truly thrilled to be back at Hofstra Law for many reasons not the least of which I can finally park in the faculty lot. <laughs> I sincerely hope that is not the lead quote I see tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow morning. And I thank you all for allowing me to be a part of the team that will grow this venture into a resounding success and realize the goal of making this incubator a model for future programs throughout our profession. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you for coming and enjoy the reception.